Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for the Triple Bridges Project virtual public meeting. Tonight's meeting is the first of two public events for this project, with the in-person open house taking place tomorrow night at the Southwest Academy at 6 p.m. Please note that materials for both events are exactly the same. My name is John Mullen. I'm a consultant supporting the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration's public outreach program for this project, and I will be the moderator for tonight's meeting. We are excited to have you here tonight. During the meeting, members of M.SHA's project team will give an overview of the project, describe the design build process, provide an update on environmental studies, and the anticipated schedule. In addition, we will also share information about the project survey, which is currently live. It is important we hear from you about your preferences regarding the project's structural style, landscaping priorities, and other features that are important to you and your community. As a reminder, tonight's meeting is scheduled to run from 6 to 7.30 p.m., and we promise to conclude the meeting no later than 7.30 p.m. If we run out of project-related questions or discussion sooner, we may conclude then. Before we begin, I'd like to ask our meeting presenters, Virginia Collier and Alexis Morris, to introduce themselves. Jenny? Good evening, everyone. My name is Virginia Collier. I go by Jenny, and I work for the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration as the project manager for the I-695 interchange with I-70 design build project. Thanks, Jenny. Lex? Sure, thanks, Jenny. Thanks, John. So my name is Alexis Morris, um, also going by Lex, and I'm co-project manager for the state design build project um, with a focus on public involvement and environmental compliance. Thanks, John. Thank you, Lex. I'd also like to acknowledge any elected officials or aides who have joined us for tonight's meeting. Please let us welcome you by adding your names to the Q&A box. I'd like to go over a few tips for our attendees on how to participate tonight, whether you are attending online or calling in. When we open for questions and comments, online users can use the Q&A box to type in your question or comment. To locate the Q&A box, please look on the right side of your screen to see a box where you can type in your question. You have the choice to post your question or comment anonymously by checking the provided box. The Q&A will help our team track the comments and questions coming in and direct them to our panel of study team members. You may also find some helpful information posted in the Q&A box, such as the study webpage and contact information. For those using the call-in option, all participants will be muted throughout the meeting to reduce background noise. For those who are calling in and do not have access to the Q&A box, you are encouraged to visit the online comment form on the project webpage after tonight's meeting to provide your comments and concerns regarding the project. To get to the online comment form, go to roads.maryland.gov and click on projects to access the Triple Bridges project on the M.SHA project portal. We will share these ways to comment again throughout the meeting. With that, I'd like to turn it over to M.SHA project manager, Jenny Collier. Jenny? Thanks, John. The Triple Bridges project is part of Maryland's traffic relief plan to improve traffic operations in the Baltimore region. The current interchange was built in the 1960s and handles more traffic than originally intended, resulting in congestion and delays for roadway, roadway users. The scope of this project is limited and will not include improvements to Security Boulevard and US 40, improvements to I-695 or I-70 outside of the interchange area, improvements outside of M.SHA jurisdiction, such as the park and ride, or improvements to Cooks Lane. The Turbo Bridges project will use design build methodology. Plans are not being prepared for review during the planning phase. M.SHA is preparing the project parameters, which will set a standard or objective for design and construction, enabling the design build team to select the methods and materials necessary to achieve that objective. 
Your input, which is needed now, will help to shape the project parameters. We will, we will go over more on how to do that later in this presentation. As discussed and reflected in the schedule, we are currently in the planning phase for this design build project. Shown on the bottom side of this graphic are the various stages of our public participation. During stage one, which has spanned 2021 and 2022, M.SHA conducted public outreach by sharing information about the design build process and why the project is needed. We are now currently in stage two, in which we are seeking your input and feedback on project parameters. Following stage two, M.SHA will prepare our environmental document in consultation with and for review by the Federal Highway Administration. We expect to begin the procurement phase for the project in the later part of 2023 and enter the design build phase in 2024 to 2025. We anticipate keeping the public informed of the project as it develops. Based on early feedback from the public, M.SHA built a task force comprised of elected officials, community leaders, neighborhood associations, and large employers near the project area. The M.SHA team is regularly providing updates to the task force on project progress, and they have provided valuable feedback, helping us refine our public outreach strategy. Coordination with the task force will continue during the design build and construction phases. The Triple Bridges project will use design build methodology in which M.SHA will not design the project, but will enter into a single contract with a design build team made up of a designer and a contractor. It's a different process that requires public input and feedback collection earlier during the planning phase. The benefits of design build are that it increases collaboration, encourages innovation, and maximizes the project goals by having a contractor and designer working together. In short, it is more benefits for the same investment. Before design plans are developed, we need your input on the project parameters, which instruct the design build team on standards or objectives to meet in design and construction. It will also include requirements, options, and do not include items like those received through public input. Also during the planning phase, natural, cultural, and community resources within the project area are examined and an environmental document is prepared. Public outreach for the Triple Bridges project will continue throughout the design build phase. However, input to affect the parameters and therefore affect the design and construction will occur now during the planning phase. The design build phase begins when a design build team is selected and the contract is awarded. Design proceeds concurrently with construction as a collaborative effort between the designer and contractor. M.SHA will select a highly qualified design build team who provides the most benefits to meet the project goals. The selected design build team will then design and construct the project based on laws, regulations, processes, and project parameters outlined in the contract. Next, Lex will go over the environmental process and project-specific environmental facts. Thanks, Jenny. In accordance with the National Environmental Policy Act, also referred to as NEPA, M.SHA is conducting environmental studies and preparing an environmental document to identify potential impacts to natural, cultural, and community resources within the project area. NEPA is a decision-making framework for federal actions that require evaluation and documentation of environmental impacts expected to result from projects. NEPA provides an opportunity for public review and input. In a design build project, environmental impacts are preliminary, preliminarily determined using the project study area during the planning phase. The design build team may not increase environmental impacts beyond those identified during the planning phase. They're encouraged to avoid and minimize impacts. If necessary, they must mitigate unavoidable impacts. Mitigation means an action or activity intended to offset known environmental impacts for applicable state and federal requirements. As the design build phase progresses, further coordination will be conducted with state and federal agencies to ensure compliance. 
Environmental resources considered when conducting environmental studies include wetlands, which are areas where water covers the soil or where water is present either at or near the surface of the soil. Streams, defined as a body of water with surface water flowing within the bed and banks of a channel. Within our interchange area, streams include Cedar Branch and Dead Run, as well as their unnamed tributaries. Also, there's less than one acre of total wetland area within the interchange area. Wetlands and streams close to the roadway and within right-of-way may be impacted by construction activities. During design development and the permitting process, these features will be avoided and impacts minimized to the maximum extent practicable. And on-site mitigation, mitigation banking, or in lieu fees will be provided for impacts to wetlands and waterways per state and federal requirements. Floodplains are low land and relatively flat areas that adjoin waterways. These include the area subject to a 1% or greater chance of flooding in any given year, also referred to as the 100-year floodplain, and the area subject to a 0.2% or greater chance of flooding in any given year, also known as the 500-year floodplain. The interchange area contains 100 and 500-year floodplain associated with dead run and unnamed tributaries. No permanent changes to in floodplains are anticipated due to the project. M.SHA evaluates the need for noise mitigation when there are proposed changes to the existing noise environment. The analysis follows M.SHA's Highway Noise Abatement Guidelines. In step one, we identify noise impacts. This analysis is currently underway. A residence is considered impacted when the noise level is equal to or higher than 66 decibels or when projected noise levels are anticipated to increase substantially over existing noise levels. In step two, we determine if noise abatement is feasible. This assessment focuses on whether it is physically possible to construct abatement that reduces noise. Feasibility considers acoustics, safety and access, and site constraints. In step three, we work to determine if noise abatement is reasonable. This ass assessment focuses on whether it's practical to construct noise abatement. Reasonableness considers public viewpoints, acoustic design goals, and cost effectiveness. M.SHA has also reviewed the project study area to identify any areas that may require temporary or permanent use by the design build team to design and construct the project. All proposed improvements are expected to stay within the M.SHA right-of-way, minimizing impacts to adjacent properties. Additional information regarding specific impacts will become available once the design build phase is underway. Environmental justice, or EJ, refers to identifying and addressing any disproportionate human health or environmental impacts to minority or low-income populations. Minority and low-income populations are present within the project study area. M.SHA is providing opportunities for public participation to all populations. Title VI ensures that public services like transportation include public participation opportunities in decision-making without regard to race, color, or national origin, including limited English proficiency. M.SHA maintains a long-standing policy that underserved and potentially vulnerable communities are recognized and engaged throughout the transportation decision-making process. M.SHA has developed a robust and inclusive outreach program to provide opportunities for residents to learn about the project and participate in the development of project parameters. Judith DeVasti, M.SHA's Title VI Manager, has joined us this evening. If you would like to share any questions for her during our Q&A session, you're welcome to do so. Judith can also be contacted with any questions related to Title VI requests at shatitle6 at m.maryland.gov or for those of you on the phone, shatitle B I at M D O T dot M A R Y L A N D dot G O V.
The study area was also reviewed for and it was determined that there are no threatened, rare and endangered species or habitat present. There are no hazardous waste sites present. There are no cultural resources affected and the proposed improvements would be in compliance with the Clean Air Act. As the project develops, the resource agencies responsible for environmental resources will be updated of any changes in the project study area or the identification of new resources. Jenny, would you like to talk more about project parameters? Thank you, Lex. Project parameters set a standard or objective for design and construction, enabling the design build team to select the methods and materials necessary to achieve that objective. All input must be received now during the planning phase. Once the planning phase is complete, M.SHA SHA cannot take additional input into consideration for the project parameters. Once the procurement phase begins, the project parameters cannot be changed or updated. So how does M.SHA develop the project parameters? First, M.SHA identifies potential approaches and shares with the public through our robust outreach campaign. Then, the public provides input on their preferences or shares opinions related to the proposed approach. This is the purpose of tonight's meeting and our survey. M.SHA then uses public input to develop the project parameters, which along with laws, regulations, and processes are used to shape design and construction. The potential design build teams must commit to meeting the project parameters, laws, regulations, and processes if they are awarded the project. M.SHA then selects the design build team that is qualified and provides the best value to meet the project parameters, laws, regulations, and processes to design and construct the project. We want your input. Input on the following items will guide project parameters. Structure style, landscaping preferences and priorities, and other important features received through the survey. Now back to Lex for more information on the survey. Thanks, Jenny. As shown here, structures elements include noise barriers, abutments, parapets, piers, the bridge deck, and girders. While the locations of structural elements will be determined in the design build phase, using our structure styler, you can help define options related to the appearance of some of these elements by indicating your preference for pier shape, concrete texture, and color treatment. In the landscaping and preferences section of our survey, we ask you whether you have a preference for a structured landscape design or a naturalized landscape design. Structured designs mix native and non-native species while prioritizing order and form. Naturalized designs have only species native to the mid-Atlantic and prioritize ecological systems to mimic nature. In the landscaping priorities section of our survey, we provide you with 15 stars and ask you to allocate them among six potential landscaping priorities. These include wildlife pollinator benefit, native species, spring blooms, fall foliage color, evergreens for screening, and flowering plants. If you have comments or concerns about a particular issue or location, the survey also includes a map where you can pin an issue or leave a detailed description in the open-ended comment. Our survey also asks us that you ask you to tell us about yourself. This includes asking what's your zip code, how would you describe your race? Is there a language other than English spoken in your household? What is your relationship to the Triple Bridges project area? And how did you hear about this survey? While it isn't required that you complete the whole survey, we encourage you to do so. Your answers help us understand how effective our survey is at reaching you and how we might improve future outreach activities. Thanks, Lex. The Triple Bridges Project Survey is available on the project website. The survey opened on October 6 and will remain open through 11.59 p.m. on December 1st. You are encouraged to fill out the survey and to share it with other connections in your network.
If desired, a hard copy of the survey also can be provided to you upon request. In addition to taking the survey and attending these events, there are several ways to provide the Triple Bridges project team with your input on the project. You can provide your question or comment in the Q&A box during tonight's meeting. You may email us through the project's dedicated email address, which is i695-i70 interchange at mdot.maryland.gov. There's also a project specific toll free information line, which is 888-341-7230. You may provide a written letter to the public meetings and logistics team leader in M.SHA's public involvement section at the following address, 707 North Calvert Street, MSC-301, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. You can also use the comment form attached to your project mailer to provide us with your comments on the project. Your input is important to us. M.SHA will review all input received to understand the public's preferences and concerns to develop the project parameters. Once the project's planning phase is complete, M.SHA will advertise the contract and the procurement phase will officially begin. The selected design build team will design and construct the project based on those project parameters. As a reminder, online users can use the Q&A box to type in your question or comment. The Q&A box is located to the right side of your screen and you have the choice to post your question or comment anonymously by checking the provided box. Our moderator will track the comments and questions coming in and direct them to our panel of study team members. For those using the call in option and do not have access to the Q&A box, you are encouraged to visit the online comment form on the project webpage after the meeting to provide your comments and concerns regarding the project. The online comment form is located at roads.maryland.gov. Click on projects to access the Triple Bridges project on M.SHA's project portal. We will now open up the presentation to your questions and comments. I already see that there has been one comment provided in the Q&A box, thank you for that. And we do have a question. The question is, what is the timeline or schedule for the project? Uh, Jenny, is that something you could answer for us? Yes, absolutely. I uh, went over a little bit more of the detail on the schedule earlier on, but essentially we are still in the planning phase currently that is ongoing through 2023. Um, we expect the project to advertise and go through procurement in 2023-2024 with a anticipated design build phase start in 2024 to 2025. Thank you, Jenny. Another question uh, asks if I-695 will be widened to four lanes each way to match the rest of the western part of the Beltway. Jenny? Because it's a design build project and um, it is a little bit different in how we're doing project parameters, I will say it's not a direct goal of the current project, which aims to replace the interstate to interstate connections. Um, but we are looking to ease congestion and improve mobility as part of this project. Um, and as I said, not necessarily a direct goal, but um, not something we will preclude either. <laughs> um, I will encourage everyone to use the um, survey tool that includes a map. Um, and within that, you can state your concerns, whether it's related to traffic or environment, um, as Lex went over earlier. Um, that's really where we are aiming to get a lot of um, citizen concerns to be able to use them for our project parameters. Thanks, John. Thanks, Jenny. Another question relates to the design of the project. They're asking how the project addresses existing delays at the interchange during peak hours. Would it bring more traffic or increase congestion? Jenny? Thanks, John. Um, yes, reducing congestion and resulting delays at the interchange is one of the goals of this project. 
um, we will be using design build methodology and those project parameters to kind of shape the design and construction um, to meet the project goals. Um, and in terms of want to just bring more congestion, um, I will say during um, construction, congestion can be expected, especially there's narrow lanes, um, you know, changing traffic patterns. Um, there are you know, work zones in place for the protection of our workers and for the protection of the roadway users. So there will be probably temporary congestion during construction period as well. But at the end of the construction time frame, we do expect congestion to um, get better as a result of the project. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Lex, a question for you. Um, they're asking what impacts, what about impacts to the environment? How will the project address or, or manage those impacts? Thanks, John. So the project team has collected data, including mapping US Census data, field survey data, and information from federal, state, and local agencies as part of the planning phase. As discussed in our presentation, because this is a design build project and a specific design is not known at this time, environmental impacts are preliminarily determined using the project study area. This winter, we will be working with federal highway and regulatory agencies to complete the environmental review for this project. The specific methods used to identify resources and evaluate environmental impacts will be developed in coordination with federal, state, and local agencies. Avoidance minimization and mitigation measures will also be evaluated. You can learn more about environmental resources and the environmental review for this project by visiting our project portal page and the environmental fact sheet that the project team posted with recent updates. Thanks, John. Thanks, Lex. And we continue to receive comments in the Q&A box. Thank you for those. We make sure that we will uh, review and, and incorporate those into tonight's public meeting. Another question uh, is asking if the live meeting content tomorrow will be the same as tonight. And the answer is yes, we are intending to make the content for both of these meetings exactly the same. Another question, will eastbound traffic have a direct path straight to the park and ride um, as opposed to traveling behind other traffic as the situation is now? That's a good question. Maybe Jenny, you could provide some insight on that. Thanks, John. Um, yes, as I said, um, for this project, we are not actually doing the, the full design for it. Um, instead, we are building out our project parameters and writing our project parameters based on public input. Um, so if there are you know, existing concerns like um, eastbound traffic on I-70 having a direct path to the park and ride and therefore, you know, going further into the city, et cetera, um, rather than having to wait for the other traffic for the um, other ramp. Um, I understand your concerns. There is congestion there today. Um, you know, that's a comment that we'd really like to see um, within our, our survey map tool. Um, feel free to, to leave a comment there and we will also um, include your comment here today. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. There's another question relating to construction, how long it would take and when it's anticipated to be completed. Not sure we know that yet until the design build team is on board. Uh, Jenny, maybe you could help share a little background information on that for us. Yes, you got it exactly right, John. And um, as of right now, we don't have the full design and so we don't actually know the full construction um, staging and sequencing yet. Um, when we do, we will definitely um, you know, come back out for more public outreach at that time when more is known. Um, I will say as of right now, based on you know the scale of this project, um, we do anticipate about four construction seasons and that's equivalent to about four years construction. OK, we've had a couple questions on the duration of construction here on our list. Another one asks if uh, there may be any restrictions imposed on ramp closures or the streaming of work based on the time of year. Is that something that could be done or included in the project parameters? Well, I'll let Lex answer a little bit more on stream restriction, restrictions, um, but in terms of ramp closures um, associated with that, we will follow any conditions of our permit. Um, you know, if there are specific ramp closures um, or other reasons for ramp closures that you are concerned about, please visit the survey tool. Uh, I would like you to, to um, know if you have concerns, there is an environmental tab you can use and you can drop a pin right exactly on the, on the point um, that you are, are thinking of, and that would really help us gather that input. Um, I will turn it over to Lex. You want to talk a little bit more on environmental permitting? 
Um, sure, Jenny. So within our environmental review process, obviously we're coordinating with DNR, we're coordinating with MD and um, US Army Corps of Engineers for any impacts that would occur to wetlands and streams. DNR defines in-stream um, work restrictions and certainly the project team would have to adhere to any of those as they apply to this project from any in-stream work that might result. Thank you, Jenny and Max. I appreciate that. Um, we have another question regarding uh, the survey and how many uh, responses have been received. The survey opened on October 9, and so far we've received over 500 uh, responses to the survey. Not all of those are full survey, like they completed the survey in full, um, but they at least participated in some of the survey. Um, and obviously we are looking forward to receiving more input from the community as it relates to the survey. So please, uh, if you could share it with your friends and neighbors, uh, we'd like to hear from them as well. If you have additional comments after you filled it out the first time, you're welcome to come back and provide new information for us, or maybe if you've changed your mind, that's okay too. Um, but we will be looking for continuing uh, receiving your input through um, December 1st at 1259 p.m. So we have another question here. Um, are there any plans to change the roadway between I-695 and the park and ride? I think we, we've already kind of addressed that as part of some earlier questions um, by making sure that the project area is limited to the interchange itself and that anything that would happen outside of that interchange would be managed as part of different projects or efforts. Um, there's also a comment about um, drag racing on that area and if there can be something that can be done there. That is an enforcement issue and we are aware of it and we are working with um, other organizations and entities to make sure that uh, we are in conversation about what that what can be done in that area, but it would not be part of this project. I don't know if Jenny, if you have anything else you'd like to add to that. Yep, um, the reduction in the width of I-70, it's not a direct goal of the current project, which aims really to replace those interstate to interstate connections, though that triple bridges area in particular. Um, we're looking to ease congestion as a result of those congestions. Uh, if you've um, viewed the triple bridges and the interchange itself from I-695, you see that the, the bridges are all stacked very neatly, lovely on top of each other. Um, unfortunately, because of the way they are connected, it makes us unable to really do any capacity improvements to those existing ramps. Um, so again, that's that's really the focus of this project is replacing those connections. Um, but if there are other areas that would ease congestion or improve mobility that we could get as a result of design build and the innovative process um, and the collaborative process that it, it is, um, obviously M.SHA would very much welcome that. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. Um, we've talked a little bit about design build as part of tonight's presentation, and uh, it's a little bit different from what the public has typically seen on our projects, the traditional process being design, bid, build. Uh, we heard from you that there were some advantages to this, but maybe if you could share a little bit more about how it differs a little bit from the traditional process and whether design build has been used in Maryland before. Jenny, would you have some insight on that? Uh, yes, I would. Um, to answer one of those questions, yes, design build has been used in Maryland before, um, and it has been used in transportation projects and specifically roadway projects before, um, which is which is very exciting. Um, design build is a project delivery method in which the owner, which is M.SHA, enters into a single contract with a design build team. That team is made of a contractor and a designer. Um, they are responsible for the design and construction of the project. It is very important to note that due to the nature of the design build process um, and in compliance with Code of Maryland regulations, which is state law, um, the public will not be able to view any plans or provide input on the final design. That's why um, it's very important for us to gain input now during the planning phase and why we're going out with public outreach now, um, including the survey. And, and in order for us to build those parameters, it's based on public input. Um, I will say a lot of the benefits of design build um, only the most qualified teams are able to pursue a design build contract. It encourages collaboration during design and construction um, and provides a lot of opportunities for innovation because you have a team that in a traditional process um, are working independently. 
during this process, they are working together. Um, so there's very um, real live updates that as a, as a design is developed, we have construction feedbacks on methods and materials um, that can certainly really aid, um, you know, future changes down the road. <laughs> um, it might encourage things like construction time, you know, being increased um, or I'm sorry, being decreased. Um, it might lend itself to just better methods um, because you have those two partners working together that in ordinary projects they wouldn't be doing so. And, and when all of this happens, Jenny, and the project goes to the design build phase, there's a way to ensure, I guess, that those project parameters will be followed as part of their work. Yes, yes. When we advertise the project and um, you know, award the contract, the design build team is um, verifying that they will adhere to that contract. Um, that contract includes, you know, all of our project parameters and, you know, laws, processes. Um, it includes all of those items that they must adhere to. Okay, that makes sense. And of course, we're encouraging the public to participate now uh, to inform the development of those project parameters. That's why we posted the survey. That's why we're holding a meeting. Uh, and there's opportunities to provide comment through the phone, email address, or through the online comment form. So please continue to provide us with your input. Now is the time to do so, uh, so we can make sure we include that information in the development of the project parameters. We have a question here about how the old the bridges are. Um, we know that this project is still in the planning phase. Is it safe to travel and, and you know, will we have um, this project start up soon so that they can be replaced? Jenny? That is a great question. Um, yes, the bridges are safe today. We have done um, recent remediation projects to maintain their, their safety. Um, the problem here is really capacity and it's like I explained earlier. Um, that it it really comes down to that it's not functioning for today's traffic um, in terms of traffic flow through the interchange. Um, I will say the bridges are inspected every two years. They're on a regular inspection cycle. Um, the most recent inspection was um, summer 2021. So that means summer 2023, they will be back out again. Um, and, you know, they, they really inspect everything because um, this is a very widely used interchange. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, there's another question here. Uh, it's also construction related. We understand that as construction progresses, there may be a need to detour traffic um, onto some other roadways. Will there be coordination with the communities ahead of that so that folks are aware of where and when those detours might occur? Jenny or, or Lex? Yep, um, I will take that one, John. This is Jenny. Um, as I said earlier, construction um, Staging and sequencing isn't yet known, um, but detours, um, you know, if a, a ramp is taken offline, um, we typically try to use state roadways as much as possible. They are usually just larger roads that can handle um, that capacity. Um, you know, if any routes are identified, we make sure it can handle that, that traffic during construction, um, that they'll be maintained. Um, you know, that is what we really try to do. I will say for the community, if we do in fact need detours, yes, we will be doing community outreach um, and that will be made known to those communities. On another side of that, <laughs> if you have concerns about existing intersections um, that have been used, say in the past, like I mentioned during that remediation project, or if there's, you know, a crash or something um, that shuts down a ramp movement and you notice that, you know, during those time frames that an intersection in your community is is used as like a cut through or a detour, um, I would really encourage you to go to our survey map tool, you know, add that dot to the map and add your comment in that, you know, during rush hour, this intersection is a problem or during, you know, events on 695, this is where traffic goes. Um, you know, those are the things that really matter to us in building our project parameters and that's the input that we really need. Thank you, Jenny. Another question here relating to construction. They're asking about uh, construction noise. Is there something that can be done about that or something that can be included in the development of the parameters? Hey, John. Jenny, you're last. Yeah, so the timing of construction activities, as Jenny mentioned, um, is anticipated to begin in 2024, 2025. However, those specific construction activities are currently unknown. 
M.SHA will provide the public with more detailed construction information once the design build phase is underway. But if you have specific areas, types of activities or times of day are that, that are of concern, we encourage you to visit our project survey and note those details. Um, we'll then share those with the project team and use those to help develop our project parameters for the design build project. Thank you, Lex. We have another question here for you as well, Lex. Um, a person is asking about the effects on climate change and if it's going to be considered as part of this project, would you be able to provide some insight on that? Certainly can. So M.SHA does address climate change in accordance with federal highway guidelines and regulatory requirements throughout the planning and decision making and um, construction process. So everything that we're doing is in compliance with federal highway and our regulatory agencies. OK, thanks, Lex. Uh, another question asking about transit improvements, I guess, as part of uh, the development parameters for the design build team. Are we going to be asking for any accommodations for transit or any transit improvements within the interchange? Lex, Ginny? Yes, John, I can take that one. This is Ginny. Um, as of right now, transit improvements are not included as part of this project. Um, we are doing coordination with um, Maryland Transit Administration regarding any um, bus or other transit um, anything affected. As of right now, there's no active projects in that area. Um, so you know, that's not something we're um, accommodating at, at the moment, but we will coordinate when any bus routes, um, you know, during construction as well. OK, thank you, Jenny. Um, there's another question here about construction vehicles and equipment, if they could be kept off of local roads during construction. I'm not sure if that is a parameter or if, it, if it's just something that would be included in the design build contract, Jenny. Yeah, if there are existing um, you know, roadways and whatnot that you have concerns about with um, you know, heavy equipment or traffic coming through, I, we'd certainly like to, to know about it. Um, you know, for the most part, we try to keep everything within um, the interchange area um, in terms of construction. Um, so if you have concerns, please note them on the map, our, our survey tool. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, another question about keeping uh, regional motorists informed about the project. Obviously, it's our goal to make sure that anyone who would be affected by this project, whether it's a local resident or a regional traveler, uh, would be up to date on the latest project news and information. Uh, to that end, we're going to make sure that we post project information on the project portal. Uh, we're going to be disseminating that information to local media and news sites, making sure that they can provide that information to their listeners, um, sharing it with uh, other organizations and regional entities that are appropriate, including uh, businesses, uh, trucking organizations, anyone who might be uh, either attracting or, or affecting traveling within the region. Uh, so uh, that is part of this project and the outreach is intended to be robust, not just local, but also regional for those other travelers. So what is the best way to share project information with your community? Obviously, uh, being here tonight, you're hearing it uh, fresh from M.SHA. Uh, we're hopeful that what you learn here, uh, you'd be able to um, facilitate out to other groups and your friends and partners. Uh, you can also go encourage them to contact us directly. There is a toll-free information line. There's an email address. It goes directly to the project team, the, the folks that are working on this project, and uh, we will listen to your concerns or comments. If you have a question, we will uh, we will get back to you with a, a response. And the, the goal is to make sure that we have a participatory process so that everyone has a, a chance to have their voice heard and to share in the thoughts as it relates to the development of the project parameters. Another question here about the drag racing. Again, uh, we did touch on this earlier in the meeting. This is an enforcement issue. We are aware of it, but we are working with other entities and, and those within the, the interchange area to make sure that uh, we are in conversation about how that can best be addressed, but it would not be part of this project. Uh, this is the interchange uh, design project, and so that would be specific to this. How will residents near the interchange be affected 
by this project? That's a really interesting question. Obviously, there are different things that would be um, happening based on where you live as it relates to the interchange. There could be traffic, it could be construction noise, um, but we want to make sure that the folks that live closest to the interchange uh, have a chance to be in communication with the project team. Um, we want to hear that as construction progresses, if you are hearing things or seeing things that are, are causing concern, that you share that information with us. Um, the, the email, the project portal, that's not going away. We want to make sure that that remains available to you during construction so that as activities progress, if you feel like you are being affected by the project, you would be able to contact us and make sure your concerns are being addressed. Another question about what occurs during the project's planning phase. I think this is a really good question for you, Lex. If you could provide a little insight and background on the planning phase as it relates to what we're doing tonight versus the design build phase. Yeah, absolutely, John. So as I mentioned before, kind of during the planning phase, what we're really looking at is the project footprint. In addition to that environmental background, um, the mapping, the census state of the field survey, there's also a certain amount of engineering background that has to go into the process to kind of determine what is feasible and that includes traffic studies and noise studies and um, air quality coordination, all of those components. Basically setting the stage or setting the parameters, um, helping to set the parameters for the design build project. And that's also where we have our public involvement here tonight. Thank you, Lex. There's additional comments coming in through the Q&A box, not just questions, but comments as well. And we do appreciate you providing those to us, and we're going to take that into consideration for tonight's meeting. Um, I'll move on to the next question so we can have that um, discussed. How often are the structures inspected? I think Jenny did answer that question as part of an earlier um, question that was submitted. And uh, so that was part of the meeting record. Is the project expected to acquire or impact any private property? Another good question. I think we're in the planning stage right now, and that is to be determined, but maybe Jenny or Lex, if you have some insight regarding property impacts and property acquisition, um, that would be appreciated. John, happy to do so. So right now, based on what the project team has discussed, we've determined that the interchange can be reconstructed within the existing right of way. Um, there may be some temporary construction easement areas that remains to be determined. Obviously, as the project moves forward into the design build phase, um, any impacts at that point in time that are determined that extend beyond what we are initially um, seeing here would have to be coordinated with proper authorities. Thank you, Lex. Uh, we have another question here about uh, an expansion of lanes as part of this project within the interchange area itself. I'm, I'm assuming because we're talking about this project being focused on the interchange. So is there a way that um, additional capacity could be introduced within the interchange area? Uh, Jenny? Yep, so as I said, the, the focus of this project is really the, the interstate to interstate connections. Um, improving capacity of, of other roadways isn't necessarily included. Um, our focus is those interstate to interstate connections first and foremost. So then would that also not include roadways that would be in part of any detours? Would those roads be, uh, would they qualify for any kind of improvements to handle that additional traffic? Um, it really depends on the roadway and um, really how much traffic and for how long is going to be it going to be detoured. And that's um, unfortunately information that's not yet known. Um, so I, I will say um, we will have to address that question at a, at a later time. OK, thanks, Jenny. There's a couple questions here relating to when we can see design plans or what the new interchange will look like. Um, I understand that this being a design build project, the design plans are not going to be made available to the public. We're really looking for hearing from everyone tonight and during this comment period what their interests are as it relates to the aesthetics and the structural style so that can inform the design build team as to how the design and construction can occur. Um, I don't know if there's anything more we would add to that unless you have something you'd like to share with us, Jenny or Lex, at this point. Yep, that's exactly it, John. Um, due to the nature of design build, the public will not be able to view any plans, and that's really because of our state um, laws. Um, per Comar, which is the Code of Maryland Regulations, um, it is a 
um, competitively sealed process and sealed meaning um, just the people who are reviewing, um, you know, the proposals will be able to 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 view those. Um, like I said, once we have a concept and more is known, we will do anticipate more outreach once the contract is awarded. OK, and I do remember in the presentation you said that design build offers more uh, benefits for the same investment. So is it is it more expensive to do design build or is it about the same as you would think for design bid build? Yep, you are correct. It is not more expensive. Um, design build combi combines the design and construction phases into a single contract. Um, and in doing so, it allows the contractor and the part um, designer to partner together um, and they really um, look for, like I said, better methods of construction, better materials to use, um, really ways to provide what we call value engineering opportunities. Um, you know that, as we said, it's it's more for the same investment. Great, thank you, Jimmy. Um, another question regarding um, potholes in the community. If this can be addressed by this project, obviously. As we've stated in some earlier questions, this project is focused on the interchange itself um, so that uh, potholes in the community that you live in would not be fixed as part of this project. Um, there's another question here about the existing park and line rot remaining open during construction. Um, I don't know if that's been talked about before, but as construction occurs and, and the bridges are being removed and replaced, uh, will there still be access to the park and ride lot during that time? Jenny? Yes, we expect the park and line rot um, to remain open during construction, though you know access to and from might be temporarily altered um, as a result of construction. We do expect it to be um, remain open. And right, I do want to sorry, I do, um, John, just want to go back to that pothole question. Um, there mm -hmm. are ways if there are, are on local roads, ways to um, contact your um, you know local jurisdictions like the Baltimore County in order to have some of those filled. You can actually do a um, a request tool online. Um, so if anyone's looking for that, feel free to email the um, our uh, our project email and we can direct you to the right area to help have those filled. Thank you, Jenny. That's helpful. A um, couple questions here for you, Lex, I believe. Uh, requesting trees to screen the interchange so we won't see it or how you protect the streams in the area during construction. I think these are really interesting and good environmental questions. If you could provide some background on that. Yeah, absolutely. So if there's specific areas that you're interested in providing vegetative screening, um, you can certainly provide those areas as a comment in our survey. I think that that's a great opportunity to, to do that. that. That way we're aware of the specific areas that you're concerned about. Um, also kind of that the other components of our survey about vegetation, what your landscaping preferences are, might help to address some of those comments. Um, insofar as stream protection and um, I mentioned earlier this the in-stream work restrictions um, as mandated by DNR but obviously we're in full compliance with MDE and US Army Corps um, as far as any of our construction activities and the requirements for those to limit minimize or mitigate any impacts to waters or water quality um, and we're also evaluating that as part of our environmental document. I hope that helps to address those questions. Yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you, Lex. Um, so we heard earlier in the presentation that this project is intended to address um, issues with the interchange that have led to con congestion and delays. Um, but there is some question about whether plans can involve any kind of traffic calming, even a reduction of lanes or other non-car centric transit projects interesting multimodal question here. I don't know if Jenny, you have some insight as to whether or not we can include those kinds of features in as part of the design of this interchange. Yep, these are certainly great ideas and I encourage you to check out our survey map tool. Um, please put your ideas there um, or any concerns that you have as well, such as um, areas that might need traffic calming, etc. Um, as of right now, no, we're not um, doing anything that are non-car centric or transit related. Um, unfortunately, you know, State Highway Administration merely deals with roadways um, and the roadway users. Um, and in this case, that is primarily 
you know, vehicles um, in the case of, of interstates. Um, our focus of this project, like I said earlier, is the interstate to interstate connections and replacement of this interchange. Um, you know, in doing that, we're also looking to ease congestion and improve mobility within the interchange area. Um, that are, that are, those are the main goals of the project. But if you have, you know, concerns or ideas for other areas, um, we're certainly going to um, like think on those and pass them on to the, the um, appropriate jurisdictions if they are outside of our jurisdiction as well. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so we've heard a little bit about design build. We've heard a little bit about um, how the project is focused on the interchange area itself. Um, what would you say would be the biggest benefit of the project, Jenny? Yep, I think the biggest benefit is really um, we are looking to, uh, you know, remove those triple bridges and, and make this um, an interchange that functions for today's traffic um, and it also could function to, you know, include potential growth for for future traffic. Um, you know, that is really the biggest benefit is congestion relief at this interchange area. Thank you, Jenny. Any other questions or comments from the public? Be happy to hear them. I think it's been an interesting discussion so far. Obviously, we've learned a lot tonight. Um, and I hope that the information that you've received has been helpful and informative. The goal, of course, is to make sure that uh, we are available to answer your questions and concerns. Um, but this is not the only time that you can provide input on this project. You can also send us information uh, in other ways. But for now, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the Q&A box and we'll make sure that our team is available to address them. All right, doesn't sound like there's anything else uh, coming in right now. Uh, so with that, um, we'd like to thank you all for joining us during tonight's Triple Bridges Project virtual public meeting. As a reminder, the Triple Bridges Project survey will remain open through 1159 PM on December 1st. For all other comments or questions, please continue to reach out to the project team via the project's dedicated email address, which is I-695-I70 interchange at mdot.maryland.gov. You may also contact us on the project's toll-free information line, which is at 888-341-7230. Please also visit the project portal for the latest project news and information. And it's now time to wrap up and move on to closing comments. I'd like to call on Jenny Collier to do that. Jenny? Yes, thank you, John. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you again for attending tonight's meeting. Uh, we know how busy schedules can be, and we definitely appreciate everyone who has taken the time to be a part of this call. Um, I'd also like to thank any elected officials who are on the call and our task force members for the work that has been done leading up to this survey and public events. Your work is very much appreciated. Um, and I will now ask our district engineer, Satapa Samantha, to say a few words. Satapa? Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Ginny. Um, so, I am Shitapa Samantha. I'm the acting district engineer for District 4, Baltimore and Harford counties at Maryland Department of Transportation, State Highway Administration. Um, first of all, I would like to thank our MDOT SHA team for a great presentation. And on behalf of MDOT SHA, I would like to thank each and everyone who in, uh, attended tonight's meeting. Um, including all the elected officials um, and all your inputs are very, very appreciated. Um, thank you. And back to John. Thank you, Sutapa. Uh, there was one more question that we did receive. Um, it is for the park and ride, if we know the number of cars that use that park and ride on a daily basis. Uh, we're going to look into that for you and see if we can get back to you with an answer to your question. If you could just email us to make sure we have your contact information after tonight's meeting, uh, we'll be happy to do so. The email address is i695interchange at i70 at Maryland, sorry, i695 
dash I seven zero interchange at mdot.maryland.gov. And with that, we're going to end tonight's meeting. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Have a good evening.